Rocky Flats was a nuclear plant open in Colorado about 15 miles northwest of Denver. When the U.S. ramped up nuclear weapons production in the late 1940s, early 1950s, they needed a new facility that could handle the production they were seeking. The Atomic Energy Commission chose Dow to manage the production facility. A four square mile plot of land was granted to them and on July 10, 1951, ground was broken on the plant. The site was to be used to produce uranium and plutonium components for use in weapons that would then be shipped to Pantex Weapons Manufacturing Facility in Amarillo, Texas and assembled into active warheads. The plant produced over 70,000 plutonium pits for nuclear weapons in its lifetime. And for the majority of his life, it was the only place pits were manufactured. Building 771, often referred to as the most dangerous building in the world, contained 20 infinity rooms. These special rooms were used to store plutonium, which was produced at the Hanford plant in Washington State and then shipped to Rocky Flats. They were called infinity rooms because the levels of alpha radiation was so high that normal equipment could not measure it. The levels inside the rooms often reached 25,000 times natural background levels. The site was massively polluted, but it was really only three events that caused 95% of the contamination. A fire in 1957 inside of a ventilated glove disposal system caused plutonium dust to be vented directly to the atmosphere for hours before the fans finally burned themselves out. This contaminated a massive area of Denver and its suburbs and was completely hidden from the public. In the mid-1960s, thousands of barrels of plutonium-contaminated cutting oil were stored outside in the open in a storage area called Pad 903. It was discovered that the barrels had corroded and leaked over 5,000 gallons of this radioactive oil into the soil, which then dried out and was blown around the area by the wind, contaminating it. Finally, another plutonium fire in 1969 prompted local health officials to take their own independent measurements which is when they discovered just how polluted the site and the surrounding area had become. The 1969 fire was also the most expensive industrial accident in U.S. history to clean up at that time. Rockwell engineers, which had taken over the management of the site from Dow, had also began to turn radioactive waste into a substance called pondcrete, where they mixed concrete with radioactive waste and molded one-ton blocks out of it. The blocks were then just stacked on an asphalt lot as storage. The blocks were weak, which began to break down, and rainwater washed the dust into the ground. Heavy metals and plutonium were included in this contamination. From September 1947 to April of 1969, there were five or more accidental surface water releases of tritium, a radioactive element found in scrap metal at Rocky Flats. The surface water ran downhill and ended up in the Great Western Reservoir. This was uncovered in 1973. Following this, urine samples were taken from people living and working near Broomfield who had drinking water supplied by the reservoir. The findings showed that those who drank water from the reservoir had tritium levels seven times higher than normal. In a 1981 study by Dr. Carl Johnson, health director for Jefferson County, it showed a 45% increase in birth defects in Denver suburbs downwind from Rocky Flats compared to the rest of Colorado. He also showed a 16% increase in cancer rates to those living closest to the plant compared to those on the outer perimeter of the area. A study by the University of Colorado in 2003 studied the health effects on 16,303 people that worked at the plant between 1952 and 1989. They found that employees of the plant were 2.5 times more likely to develop a brain tumor than other people. After being tipped off about a lot of the bad things that were going on at Rocky Flats, the FBI raided in 1989. Lawsuits were filed and settled, and after all was said and done, the plant was closed. Plans for cleanup began immediately. At first, expected to take upwards of 70 years, it only took six, but the results are either, either good or horrible depending on who you ask. But by 2005, the plant had been completely removed. They even dug up 36 acres or 97,800 tons of soil and concrete from Pad 903. The plant was removed at a cost of $4 billion. Now there is nothing but an open green plateau. The plutonium is still there. It is not going anywhere for a few thousand years. But the area is now the Rocky Flats Wildlife Refuge. There is concern about new development and neighborhoods being built right up to the perimeter of the old plant grounds. 
$500,000 houses that you're required to sign papers agreeing not to plant any type of rooting gardens. You know, just in case. After all, an independent study in 2012 east of Rocky Flats found plutonium levels 100 times greater than allowable background levels. In 2016, a Metropolitan State University of Denver study found that people living downwind from Rocky Flats to have an unusually high rate of breast, thyroid, and prostate cancer. The Rocky Flats plant area in the middle of the wildlife refuge is still off limits. It's designated as a Superfund site, and the half-life of plutonium in the soil there is going to take a long, long time to return to normal levels.